Well, welcome to Team Talk with the Sid Richardson Museum. My name is Leslie Thompson. I am Director of Adult Programs at the Sid. And before we get going, I actually want to start us off with how I start all of our adult programs at the Sid, um, which is with uh, what's known as a land acknowledgement. And for those who are not familiar, uh, land acknowledgement pays tribute to the original inhabitants of the land that we are on. Um, and while we're all in different places um, and not currently at the actual museum, um, I'll be speaking to kind of just the general area where we are. Um, so we just said Richardson Museum respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who have lived on this land since time immemorial. And the Sid would especially like to acknowledge and pay respect to the Wichita and affiliated tribes upon whose historical homeland our museum is located. Uh, now today we have, um, in addition to members of the Sid Richardson Museum staff, um, we also have a special guest with us today. Um, so I'm gonna go in order of my screen and introduce uh, everyone so our viewers know um, who is with us today. Um, so above me, um, I've got Shelby Orr, who is Director of School and Family Programs at the Richardson Museum. Then below me, I've got um, Betsy Thomas, who is Director of Education Resources. Then we've got Scott Winterode, who is our Director of the Museum. Um, then below him is Renee Green, who is our Admin Assistant at the Sid Richardson Museum. And then our special guest here today is Ann Kingsip from the Meadows, where she is Director of Education. Um, so we are we're happy to have everyone here this morning. Um, to quickly review for those who are not familiar with um, our Teen Talk program, this is a, an adult program that we offer at the Sid Richardson Museum um, the first Wednesday of every month. Um, and Teen Talk is a program that's designed around slowing down the art viewing process, um, really allows kind of a visual deep dive um, but also, I like to think of it as an opportunity to just slow your roll a little bit, take a breath, and, and really look at a work of art. Um, the average visitor spends 10, 15 seconds um, with a painting, and um, that's really not a lot of time. Um, and as we'll find out, even the 10 minutes that I'll be allotting is not even close to enough time to really take in um, uh, one work of art. So. Um, this is a program that really kind of lets you see <laughs> and look um, at, at art. Um, now normally our program, our Teen Talk program, allots for about half an hour, um, but today for um, our virtual program we will um, keep it down to 10 minutes. Um, and I have on the screen with us an image of a painting from our collection um, that we're going to be looking at today and talking about. Um, for our Teen Talk program. And I want to remind our viewers that while uh, it is great um, that we have technology like we do today that we can see uh, digital reproductions of the paintings, um, it is by no means even um, closely related to <laughs> seeing the real deal in person. So, um, you know, when you have a chance, when the museums do reopen, I really encourage you to go visit uh, museums like the Meadows in Dallas or the Sid Richardson Museum in Fort Worth. Um, so you can see these paintings in person because there's just so many details that you miss um, when you're looking at it on just a, a computer screen. Um, but since museums are closed right now, um, this is the next best thing. Um, so we, we have a great uh, reproduction with us today. Um, so with that being said, actually, let's go ahead and um, Let's start, let's start looking and let's start talking about this painting. I'm going to refrain from mentioning the artist um, and the title and date of this painting until we get to the end of the conversation, just so I don't uh, influence our looking in any way. This is really just about what we see in front of us. Um, so let's have a conversation together for the next 10 minutes. I'll set a timer. Um, so as you're looking at this painting, um, let's go ahead and share something that you notice. The first thing that I see um, is the gentleman in the fork in the forefront there, um, and he has a, a pan. Um, Are you talking about the the gentleman who's standing on the mm -hmm. right there? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. With the pan, and you see the little river trickling through um, mm -hmm. there and their and their tools. So that is the first 
when I look at this painting, that is the first thing that I see. Yeah. So your eye immediately goes towards that, right. that, mm -hmm. that standing figure in the foreground and you see his, his pan and then you also see where he's standing next to you. You see this little bit of river or water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else do you notice? I'm kind of immediately taken with the composition. I'm noticing that there's like a very solid like textbook example of foreground, <laughs> midground, and background, right? Across these for horizontal bands. Um, so I'm kind of drawing on that. Okay, yeah. So Anne's noticing this kind of this division um, of the composition and how there's these um, different parts to it. We've got the foreground, we've got the middle ground, and we've got the background, um, each with each one having something going on in it. Yeah. What else do you notice? When, when I first look at it, uh, the first thing I see is that um, schooner wagon with the, the white top and then all that white that's around that. So like it it's almost at the center of the composition and it just seems like this very attractive kind of part of the composition that mm -hmm. I'm drawn to immediately. Mm, yeah, so Scott's attention is really drawn to that schooner, that uh, covered wagon in the middle. Um, that also kind of has like this little halo of white around it as well. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you notice? Even, even yeah. below it, it's white. It's like very, like everything's just kind of white. And there's a white across the back of the, the cows, oxen that are pulling it. Um, so it's, it, there's a lot of white right there. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of white in the midground. What else yeah, I like the, the mirroring, but it, you know, it's the same but different having the um, stagecoach here with the horses instead of the oxen and they're, you know, acknowledging each other, which I think is interesting mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah, you get a little bit of humor, human interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody's acknowledging everyone else. The, the guys in the front um, who are panhandling are looking over at this area too. So I think, you know, that center area being the focus is kind of interesting yeah yeah it's funny because it looks it looks like they're in a race or something in the middle ground i mean like it because you, you see wagons. the stagecoach running by but it almost feels like the wagon is moving really quickly too it's it's very strange and it has a lot of movement right there yeah even though the guy's walking next to it but these <laughs> horses look like they're going really fast <laughs> Yeah. I almost I almost start to wonder if it's like when you're on a one-way highway and you got to get past someone and they kind of like <laughs> you know, the right the the grouping closest to us seems to be slowing down the other one seems to be politely thanking for giving yeah. I like that I like that analogy Anne. <laughs> Modern I too. traffic yeah I had always thought that the uh, gentlemen on the stagecoach were acknowledging the gentlemen that are panning there but he very well could be <laughs> telling the this the schooner wagon thank you <laughs> <laughs> there's multiple interpretations <laughs> what and else do you notice i noticed too behind the main um wagon you can see some more a whole kind of maybe wagon trail um emerging from from the back there mm -hmm. um, yeah kind of coming from the, the stormy area into the sun. Mm, yeah, so we're noticing as you look further into the background that there are more people coming, there are more wagons coming mm -hmm. up behind, yeah. And Betsy, you mentioned that that looks like a storm back there in the distance. Mm. Kind of like they're, they're allegorically leaving behind um, the mm. past and whatever their previous, the rain into into the sunshine or into this new kind of frontier mm, opportunity. I like yeah. Mm. I'm I, looking at this, the center of the wagons and I'm not, I'm not very familiar with the terminology of the American West, but I'm, I'm interested, like I know, I don't think of cattle as the ones that are pulling the, what are you calling it a schooner wagon? Like, I don't know if that's common, but I'm, I normally think about the cattle as the one being driven. And it hmm. seems like there's horses pulling the other carriage. I don't know if this is like a, a standard thing that I just don't know about, but I'm curious about why the, the cattle are pulling the wagon. Yeah, so there seems to be some, some question about 
the choice in animals here. <laughs> um, and you, see, you do see a difference between the two wagons that horses are drawing, the stagecoach, um, whereas you don't have horses on the schooner. And I think, um, I think those might be oxen. Someone else mm -hmm. can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that would um, be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. So that make, might make a little more sense yeah. versus having like yeah. actual cattle. Um, you, do, you do occasionally see oxen pulling carts. Okay. Yeah. What is, what, is that a, a dog in front of the oxen? Thank you. It's, it's like a rain dog. Because <laughs> it, it looks is like rain dog. a pony too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has antlers. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of strange. Huh. It looks some, some kind thing. of dog-like creature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the one that's more in the foreground looking mm -hmm. at everybody coming west. Yeah. And then there's the donkey. There's a lot of animals in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of different animals. I love Wait. the... What? Go ahead. Uh, oh, no. I, was, I, I love the colors, uh, the color scheme for this painting. Um, yeah. And what I do you like about it? Um, I don't know. I, I, it's dappled. It's, um, it, it, I don't know. It's just got a lot of, uh, it has a lot of color in it. Um, but I, and so I was going to refer to those of y'all that are, um, more schooled in these things and to talk about the colors because I just, I love them. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I was wondering if that might open up y'all might want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're being as, prompted. <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as you say that, that was the first thing I noticed was that there's this kind of similar um, sienna red that is used from the foreground area around the stream and then it's on the oxen on the stagecoach and then mm -hmm. it's the same color that's used in the, the, the kind of foothill um, mountains that you see in the background. Um, so it's, it's interesting that carries through and also that blue that's used as the shadows in the mountains in the background is also that same blue that we see in the stream and the foreground. So he's balancing these colors back and forth. And then as I look at the whites, there's just that, that thickly applied white that goes all over the canvas mm -hmm. from the rocks in the foreground to the, that area in the middle ground that I was talking about to the snow in the background. So there's this um, beautiful kind of repetition of pattern, shape, and color throughout the picture. Well, and then the, my favorite color scheme, it, like in general, is the sagey purple and sagey green um, together. So having that kind of balance coming the other way too, for mm -hmm. me having different colors. You know, I hadn't even noticed the, the blue and use in the shadow until you mentioned that, Scott. And so when I look at both of the, um, um, the groupings in the middle there underneath the horse and the oxen, to see, looking at the shadow and seeing all the color that's in the shadow. Um, mm -hmm. I hadn't noticed that before. I had neither. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I do love all the colors. I love um, the splotches of, I don't know what you call, you call that, but I call it like a seafoam green. Maybe you're calling that sage, Shelby. But like the speckles up in the um, foothills, those little mm -hmm. touches of, of green. Um, I really like mm -hmm. those, and I think they're kind of, I echoed a little bit below, but really definitely up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. I even love the way he's painted the, what I presume to be wood um, from the stagecoach. There's enough detail that it, in color mm -hmm. that you, to me, it has a wood um, texture. And then also the green, I love the green on the schooner wagon. You actually sort of see panels uh, again, mm -hmm. it has a the wood feel, but it's they're completely different. But um, to me, he captured that. Yeah, there's like there's there's depth, <laughs> there's detail, um, even within yeah within the the wagon and the stagecoach that you can you can even make out the panels of the wood, which is really impressive. Yeah, just the detail that he was able to get in that figure too, right next to it. It's mm -hmm. really lovely. I have a question about um, the different parts of it. Uh, what's your consensus on this guy right here? Do you think that he is part of a party or do you think he's on his own like these guys are, like a separate archetype? Good question. That's a good question. I, what do y'all think? I assumed he was with the, the schooner uh, in the foreground. Um, oh, okay. That was just proximity. an assumption. But 
Right, right. Um, just he's with them, but coming along, couldn't sit on the, the buckboard part of the wagon. Just like the gentleman that I assume is with them also that's walking beside mm -hmm. them. And I'm just noticing it actually looks like he has a stick of some kind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Driving. I never noticed that until I, I just really focused on him. Um, yeah, yeah think, that was my assumption, though. I think oh, I'm wow. going to disagree because the like looking at the different archetypes, you have the panhandlers for gold right here, the schooner wagon, you know, uh, people looking for farmland, family. new opportunities, yeah. family, yeah, the, the stagecoach. Um, and then I think this kind of, to me, represents the, the American cowboy. Mm -hmm. um, and then even the, you know, the wildlife opposition, like they're going to a new frontier. And um, so I think it's almost like a, not necessarily opposing, but different archetypes and different forces. Yeah. All kind of going to the same place yeah. to fight for their spot. I like okay. this. I think this might be a good question to pose to our viewers because we actually <laughs> met our 10 minute limit. <laughs> Uh, like two minutes ago. <laughs> so, I mean, again, this another example to show that 10 minutes, even 10 minutes is not enough to yeah. look at one work of art because there's still there. I mean, well, this has a lot going on in it, but um, <laughs> there are so many unresolved questions and, and comments. Um, but actually, I really am curious uh, for those of you who are watching. What do you think about this figure <laughs> who is standing yeah, on the horse um, on the far right? What, what is he by himself? Is he with another group? Um, we'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, but for, for this discussion, <laughs> um, we, we'll, we'll wrap things up um, and uh, hope that this has been a, a really great opportunity to, to show viewers how um, how one can experience looking at a work of art, particularly with a group. Um, I think that's what makes this program so wonderful is that um, it really, um, I find so much value in the uh, conversation. Um, and I really feel like the program um, depends so much on each of the participants um, and what they bring to the table and, and what they see, because uh, we all see things differently, you know. Um, I'm I'm seeing new things for the first time in this painting after this conversation, um, and I feel like that happens every time I do a team talk. So that's that's something that I really I really love about this. Um, and and for those who are watching, maybe this would be another model for how you can enjoy a work of art um, with your friends and family while museums like the Sid and the Meadows are closed. Um, have a little a little virtual gathering, if you will. Um, hey, Wesley. Wesley. Yes. Tell them the name and the title of the work. Yes, the name of the I'm artist. glad you mentioned that. <laughs> I was going to forget. Um, so this painting is called The 49ers um, and is by Oscar Burning House. We don't have an exact date on this painting, um, but we know uh, that it was painted before 1942 because that's when Sid Richardson acquired it. Um, some scholars suggest that maybe it was painted in the 1920s. Um, some suggest that it was painted um, it resembles a, a painting from 1938. So um, there's still questions about when it was painted, but the, the title 49ers kind of gives you a little more information um, about what's in the painting, but obviously without having the title, we were able to um, piece together a lot of that just on our own conversation. So um, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear from our viewers um, what you, Think about this painting, any observations that you have, any questions that you have, um, or any other observations that we um, were able to get to. So please do leave your comments um, below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but with that, thank you everyone for joining us with Tea and Talk today. Thank you. <laughs>